What's up, y'all? I got a banger from Sigma Traits. Let's get straight into it. There should be very strong sentencing for women that make false allegations, who false accuse because men's lives are being ruined. So I think what should happen is that if you accuse somebody of rape, whatever sentence that rape would hold, you should have to serve. If there was- I actually 100% agree with that because then women would stop doing this stuff so much. But as of right now, it's guilty until proven innocent. It's brutal. Clear cut proof that you made it up. You should have to serve that sentence. And what I will say is I do know a girl who falsely accused a guy of rape and she did it because she wanted to get back with her ex. Unreal. And she thought it was a good storyline. Can you it- imagine if guys tried to do this? It would just not fly. It was absolutely disgusting. And I am no longer friends with that girl to this day. And I, you know what? I was so young then, but I should have had the courage to call the police and have told them that, hey, I do think that she's lying. I can't say for certain that she was lying, but it was a little suspect uh, to me. And I do believe that she did to get back with her ex. And it worked. Wow. Unreal, dude. I have a team of people. Everybody who works for me right now are men. I've noticed if I hire someone and they're female, I have to be careful about how I talk to them, even give, giving criticism. And maybe it's me, but I feel like I have to be a little bit nicer, a little mm-hmm. bit more gentler. Whereas with a dude, I can be like, can you just not do this again? And they're like, yeah, no problem, won't do it again. But if it's female, I'm like, okay, you did like this a little bit wrong. Here's how to do it a little bit better. Overall, you're doing a great job. Everything's fine. Please don't be upset. I mean, she's right. I've been a manager before and you really kind of have to soften the blows with women. They just don't take things like every like when you tell a woman something as far as when it comes to criticism, they take it personally, whereas men, they can disconnect personally and take it objectively of like, okay, this is just pertaining to the job. Whereas women, they're like, well, I'm not a bad person. I promise. It's like you really have to soften the blow. So I actually feel that because I've been a manager before. So I know exactly what she's talking about. Talk for a moment about Me Too. You've rejected the idea that we should always believe the victim in a, in a, in a rape Well, that's a obvious. That's yes. what happened in yeah. the Lynch cases in the 1950s in the United States. The uh, victim uh, was always uh, believed. Yes, mm-hmm. and I was going to say that's fair enough. But why not accept the situation as being the victim deserves to be treated as if she's telling the truth in our attempts to get at the truth? And in doing that, we do our best not to re-victimise her. Because that isn't how the adversarial system works, and I don't think But that why not a... advocate for that? Because Rather the adversarial sim- system is a very effective judicial Mental. system, and it's certainly the case that among crimes that are falsely reported, rape crimes are at the top of the list. So there is no believing the victim. There's no reason for people to assume that when they enter the criminal justice system that they're going to be treated with kid gloves or treated easily. That isn't how it works. I mean, fact. Jordan Peterson's based, though. And if there's a book, I I know some of you guys might like Jordan Peterson, some of you might not like Jordan Peterson, The Twelve Rules for Life. Very good book. One of the best rules I learned from that book is treat yourself like someone that you're taking care of. It was a huge one for me. 60% 60% of male managers say they are uncomfortable working alone with a woman out of fear of complaints of sexual harassment. Wow, that's a lot. Women in the workplace. Men, do not avoid working with women because you're afraid of sexual harassment complaints. That is gender discrimination. To avoid sexual harassment complaints, do not sexually harass people. Stupid. Well, the thing is, false accusations nowadays. Like girl, women can make things up. If this is the face of the women in the workplace, <laughs> good lord! Looks like the Joker without makeup. Shots fired! Unreal. Shots fired! Period. Yeah. Ooh, she. Have told you us, ever huh? experienced the unpleasant situation of a colleague making a false allegation against you at work? For men, it's often a female coworker behind such accusations. Navigating this workplace minefield can feel like a game of office roulette where men never know when the next unfounded claim will strike. This unfortunate reality underscores the ongoing challenges and drama men face in professional environments involving female colleagues. Interacting with women in professional settings can often feel like navigating a minefield of sensitive emotions and potential drama. When an error is pointed out, one might quickly find themselves perceived as the antagonist, compelled to tread lightly around delicate feelings. Conversely, Interactions with male colleagues tend to be more straightforward. Mm -hmm. You identify an issue, they acknowledge it, and the matter is resolved without unnecessary theatrics or emotional upheaval. It is noteworthy how these dynamics differ significantly. 
I mean, true, though. If so I true. was a man, and I'm not a man, but if I was a man, I wouldn't hire a woman. I wouldn't do it. And I say it all the time, and I say that, and that is something that women need to consider when they're talking about this stuff. When you are saying that a man complimenting you and saying, oh, I really, I, oh, I really like your outfit today, um, is a form of sexism. What is the, if you're a man, why hire a woman, right? So you no, fought no. all this time to be able to get into the workforce only to say these are going to be the rules. You know, if you say anything, even if you compliment me, if you, if you look at me, anything, I'm going to have a reason to fight you. And by the way, you're going to want to settle and pay me because even just the stain of an accusation is enough to ruin men. So what yeah. is, what, if, you're, if you're a guy, right, in this society, in this Me Too environment, in this, in this uh, litigation-rich environment of misogyny and sexism and all of these claims, what is the value add? Uh, What's the the risk? You know the the benefit and the risk. I just I can't do the analysis and say I'd just be like. No, also, so. I think it depends on industry. So if you're doing a lot of like, let's say you have a chain of daycares, I think having women there would be a lot better. There's certain fields that I think women dominate and they do a better job at, mainly when it comes to the social services of like people to people. But when it comes to like companies and things like that, and men can do it most of the time. They work longer hours. You can criticize them directly. They don't take it personally. But there's certain fields that women do better. Now, would it be odd if it was an all male, um, an all male daycare? <laughs> That'd be a little weird. That'd be a little weird. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Would you rather send your kid to an all male daycare or an all female daycare? Personally, all female daycare is what I would. I'd, I'd rather have women in that nurturing environment, that femininity to be around my kids. Now, I if I have a son or something like that, I can bring them home afterwards and then we can do the rough and tough things like that. But like when they're younger, I want a woman to take care of them. That's why you see most of the time baby like 90% of babysitters are girls. That's just what it is. I remember in high school I would be so jealous. I'm like, "How do you get to just babysit?" Nobody ever asks me to babysit. I have to go mow yards. I have to go pick up sticks. I have to go do manual labor, but you get to just sit at somebody's mansion and get paid $50 an hour while they go out on a dinner date and you just watch their kid who just sits there with an iPad. I'm like, how is this freaking fair? But that's, I mean, it's, it is what it is. And here's the other thing. If um, the gender pay gap was real, why wouldn't everybody just hire women? But the thing is, it's not. Men typically work harder. They typically work longer. So if we could just pay women less, why wouldn't just everyone hire women? Some food for thought for you. So hire one. Give me all the men. Some food for thought. I was meeting with a group of guys several years ago about never being alone with another, another woman. And this one guy said, hey, bro, in my job, and I know a lot of you guys are thinking the same thing. Hey, bro, in my job, I have to be alone with women. I'm like, no, bro, you don't. This guy, six months later, confessed to having an affair with this woman the entire time he was telling us he had no choice. The current climate of fear surrounding false accusations has led many men to be cautious, not because they intend to engage in inappropriate behavior, but because even a normal interaction can be misconstrued. The reality of false accusations is a chilling one, causing men to second-guess every interaction with women. The fear of being unjustly accused of misconduct or harassment casts a shadow over both professional and personal exchanges making some men opt to avoid interactions with women altogether for self-preservation. Can't blame them, dude. It's a regrettable state of affairs when the fear of false allegations hinders genuine connections and collaboration. Mm -hmm. Moreover, when it comes to providing feedback, the drama can escalate quickly. Constructive criticism directed at women often results in a whirlwind of hurt feelings and exaggerated reactions, yep. making it feel like walking on eggshells to avoid triggering a meltdown. In contrast, Interactions with men tend to be straightforward. You point out a mistake, they acknowledge it, and the matter is resolved without emotional theatrics or lingering resentment. I mean, so true, though. So let's talk about how often does this actually happen. I found this article. This is from Brown University. I'll drop it in the chat. Like, how often does this really happen? According to this article, it says reliable studies consistently measure the rate of false reports as 2% to 10%. 2% to 10% are actually found to be completely false allegations, which is pretty small. Out of all of the actual yeah. cases that they have, only 2% to 10% don't have some substantial evidence behind it. <laughs> but the thing is, what, what about the other way around? Is it two to ten percent when it comes to men to women? You know what I mean? Like, I just I don't know if I completely believe that stat. I have to say that this man does not seem to understand numbers. Yeah. Moreover, that's for confirmed cases. Rape cases are notoriously difficult to prove definitively. Yeah. But even with the inherent challenges, a rate of two ten percent is substantial. 
The idea that one in 10 people might be involved in such cases is staggering. It's also worth noting that the claim men have no choice but to engage with women is often overstated. In reality, men have choices in how they interact with women, whether in the workplace, social settings, or personal relationships. It's not an unavoidable fate. It's a decision they make. Therefore, men should own up to their decisions rather than making excuses. In the workplace, men need to navigate interactions carefully to avoid potential drama. Understanding that false accusations are like landmines ready to detonate with the slightest misstep is crucial. Meanwhile, women who thrive on creating trouble may find themselves ignored and sidelined. Mm -hmm. This strategic move allows men to preserve themselves by avoiding unnecessary conflict, leaving those prone to drama to stew in their own toxic brew. In the game of office politics, sometimes the best move is to not play at all. And that's it for today on Sigma Well, and Trace. here's the thing, though. If you do ignore them, then they get mad that they're being ignored. So it's like you can't win for losing. You're like, all right, I'm going to cut myself out. I'm not going to talk to them at all. I'm going to avoid them like the plague. But then they feel like there's some disdain, some angst in the office where you're ignoring them for some reason. And then they call you out and say that you're hostile or say that you're unprofessional. So it's like you can't win for losing. I think the best thing you can do is like... If you're gonna if you're gonna hire people, you just need to make sure that when you're inducting them into your company and the company culture, you need to have like a solid training for a week or two and talk about all of these things. And also make sure the people that you're hiring you're vetting correctly. Because if you're not vetting them correctly, you're probably gonna hire somebody that's not really up to snuff and that maybe just looking to sniff those things out. Because there are women out there that will literally just get hired at a company and then just wait for something to happen, report it to HR. And then boom, it's a wrap for you. You're done. You could have worked there for 20 years. It could be one small little bitty thing. Like Candace Owens said, most of these people would rather pay out a settlement than sit there and try to figure something out. It's truly sad because there's men and women out there that I think we should harmonize the way we work together in the workplace and that we're better together and together we're better. I think women bring certain things to the table. I think men bring certain things to the table. So I think it's good that we work in harmony in the office. Hell, it used to work back in the 80s, in the 90s. In the 2000s, and then the 2010s, it started to get a little wonky, and then now everybody's in prison. You know, Bill Cosby's, like, got accused of R-wording all these women. I mean, I don't even know if it's true. I didn't d dig into the case, but it happened back in the 70s. Like, what? Like, how, how does somebody get found guilty? What about, what happened to the, what happened to, what is it, the, the rule of, or the law of, ah, you got, you got know what I'm talking about. Let me know in the comments. It's like, there's like a there's like a law of time or something like that. After a certain amount of time, you can't be charged or something like that. Like, what happened to that with him? Why like, why is he rotting in prison? Now I'm not saying he didn't do it. It seems more like he did it. I'm just saying, but like, <laughs> it seems like he did that. And Bill Cosby's in there eating the pudding with R. Kelly in there singing. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> it's just it is what it is. But it's crazy to me because like I've worked remote for so long that I don't really have a lot of direct interaction with women that I work with and I've never really felt that hostility in the workplace, but let me know. Do you guys have any stories? Let me know in the comments. Do you have any stories of having some hostility in the workplace, a buddy that, you know, getting fired, a woman that maybe you worked with went to HR. I'd love to hear the stories. The last video we did, you guys shared some stories, but I'm sure there's a plethora of these stories out there. I'd love to hear them. And also if you own a business and you hire, like, do you hire mainly men? Do you hire mainly women? Do you try to hire a mix? Do you try to do the diversity thing? Like, personally, I hate the diversity inclusion. I hate all that, the DEI hires. Um, I mean, it's it just, to me, we should, we should be hiring off of competency and not color or ethnicity or sex or anything or gender or anything like that. We hire off of competency. Like, when I get on a plane and I'm going to go fly out, I want to make sure we have the best pilot. I don't care what they look like. I don't care where they're from. I don't care what their background is. I just want to know that they're the best pilot. That's all I care about. And I'm sure most of you guys would agree. Like all that matters to me is your competency. As long as you're competent, you're smart, then cool. I'd rather you fly my plane. Uh, Rob Schneider has a bit about that and it's absolutely hilarious where he talks about, <laughs> he's like, you're telling me we're having diversity hires with pilots and, and like two people in the crowd clap. And he's like, Wait, you're telling me that we're not just hiring the best pilots? Like, <laughs> we're hiring diversity? Like, what? That makes no sense. But personally, if I had a company, 
um, which maybe one day I will with this whole YouTube thing. If you guys keep blessing me the way you do, um, then maybe I'll, I will hire some people. But as of right now, like I, I've, the jobs that I would need done aren't gender specific, but I would probably hire guys because I, I could get straight to the point. Right. Even even with Cass, sometimes when we're talking about topics and we're talking about things we need to fix, she'll give me some constructive criticism. I'll give her some. I have to make sure to sandwich that with like something good, what she needs to work out, work on and something in something good again. I call it the compliment sandwich for any of you guys that do manage uh, people or, you know, you're looking to get a woman to move in a certain way without like just coming because you can't come at a woman the same way you come at a guy. We all know this. It's called the compliment sandwich. Hey, you're doing this really well. I absolutely love it. I think you need to work on this. And here's the reason why. But once again, I also think you're doing this really well. The compliment sandwich. So you're giving them two compliments and one bit of constructive criticism. With men, you can just cut to the Chevy Chase and you can just give them one, one piece of criticism. And you don't have to worry about none of that. You know what I mean? Like I, I even tell my managers and people that I've worked for, I'm like, just tell me straight. Tell me how it is. Don't sugarcoat it. You don't have to give me a bunch of compliments, make me feel good. Just cut to the chase and then let my results be the, be the things that you praise me on, right? That's all I care. And there was a quote I heard the other day that I wanted to tell you guys. It's results respond to effort. Results respond to effort. So if you're mad at where you're at right now, you feel like you're stuck in a rut, you don't know what to do. Uh, a lot of guys have been hitting me up on Instagram. Shout out to you guys, and I've been helping them. I, so I've come up with like three things that I think every guy should do if you're stuck in a rut, you don't know what you're doing. There's a book on Spotify called As a Man Thinketh by James Reed. Um, see if I can pull it up. As a Man Thinketh. I think his name's James Allen. Maybe it's James Allen. I'm stupid. It's James Allen. Um, so this book right here, As a Man Thinketh, but book by James Allen. You can go listen to it. It's like It takes like 50 minutes. I do it when I'm mowing the yard or you know, cleaning the house or, or doing whatever, doing mundane things, walking Loki, whatever it may be. Um, I'll listen to this. I've listened to it probably six or seven times. My goal is to get to 100 by the end of the year. There's so many good life lessons in this, and you can just listen to it over and over and over and program yourself, because that's the whole point of this is to program yourself. So number one, program your mind. Go listen to As a Man Thinketh. Like I said, it's like an hour maybe. Next thing is hit the gym. A lot of you guys are like, I don't want to go to the gym. I don't like it. You have to do some sort of exercise. you got to think about like, Maybe a thousand years ago when we were archaic, like, or 2000, I don't know, 5,000 years ago, we were cavemen. We were out there hunting constantly. Like our testosterone levels are plummeting right now because we're not going out there in the work in, in like the field and we're not working. We're not hunting. We're not doing these things. We go to the grocery store to get our meat. We go to the grocery store to get our water. We don't have to scavenge for anything. We don't, we don't really have to work for any of the food that we get. Right? So you got to go out there and you got to work out. I know it may suck, but like, most of Americans are obese, obese. So you guys, we need to be in the gym anyways, right? The, the food here is terrible. Our diets are bad. So go get in the gym. And the third thing is, is fix the food that you eat. But if you do those three things, you go reprogram yourself by listen to as a man thinketh, you start getting in the gym and you start fixing the food that you put in your body. You will be, oh my God, you'll be in a much better place six months from now, 90 days from now, even. The other things you can do is watch the content that you consume. If you're just like consuming crap content and mindlessly scrolling through YouTube or Instagram or TikTok, stop doing that. Consume content with a purpose, which is why you need to listen to books. Go follow people that give you value. Like if you guys follow me, I appreciate it. Hopefully I'm giving you some sort of value, which is why you follow me, right? Do these kind of things, reprogram yourself, and it's never too late to start. I'll give you guys a story of me. So I lived in Austin for years, and I thought I was going to be a musician. I really thought. I was like, I'm going to be him. I'm going to be on stage, and people are just going to be <laughs> clapping and loving. Uh, well, here's the thing. Um, it didn't work out. It did not work out. So by the age of 30, I told myself, all right, if I can't be a famous musician and make a whole bunch of money, I'm going to quit and I'm going to pivot. From there, I pivoted. I went on Instagram. I started making like short form content. I did that for like two years straight. And then this last November, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start recording 20 minute videos on YouTube every single day. And I'm going to do it for a year to see what happens. So far, we started in November. What is it? July, month seven, two. So I've been doing it for about nine months. and We almost have 50,000 subscribers. So I'm telling and shout out to you guys for that. I really do appreciate you guys. But it's just, it's proof that results respond to effort. And if you stay consistent and keep your head down, don't worry about the numbers. Don't worry about, like, like, dude, nobody was watching my content in the beginning. Nobody was checking me out. Nobody was subscribing. I was just putting out content for nobody. But you have to do that, man. Start today. 
you'll thank yourself tomorrow. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Do not forget to like, comment, subscribe. Um, go follow me on Rumble. The link should be in the description. And also cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality. Makes you irresistible to women and makes you respected by men. Uh, we've had a bunch of people buy some copies, so shout out to you guys. I really do appreciate it. But um, yeah, man, I love you guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.